earnings, EBAT, net income, NOPAT. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and our LinkedIn group is MBA Accounting and Finance. What I'd like to do is take a question that a uh, student sent me over the weekend that does a nice job at explaining two fairly common profitability calculations, which is why this video is in the profitability ratio section of my YouTube listing. So we have Subway Corporation and we have an income statement for year one. Sales less cost of sales gets us gross profit in this case of 120000 We then subtract off two costs that are considered fixed. General and administrative overhead, people in the office, and marketing costs. For this question, I told the student I had to assume that depreciation was also a fixed cost. It wasn't identified in the question, but you'll see as we go further down that I assume that it was for this question. So if I take my gross profit of 120000 and I subtract off these costs, 140000 total, I get a loss in blue earnings before interest and tax. So those are my earnings before considering interest expense and taxes. We've got a loan, so we have some interest expense that happens to be $10,000, which increases our loss. Earnings before tax is $30,000 loss now. We don't pay any income tax. If we had a profit, the problem says that it would be a 30% tax rate. And so since we don't have any tax, we go straight from a $30,000 loss here to net income, $30,000 loss. And after that, I thought the, the student was asked several really good questions. So the first one was break even. Well, if I'm a business owner and I'm thinking about break even, what would my break even revenue be for EBDAT, which is defined as earnings before depreciation, amortization, and taxes? So we're not considering taxes, we're not considering interest, and we're not considering depreciation. Well, if you think about the basic formula for break even, sales less cost of sales, and we've, we're told in the question that 60% of sales is equal to cost of sales, and that that is a constant. So 60% of 80,000, of 30, 300,000 in sales, excuse me. 300,000 times 60% is how I got 180,000 cost of sales. So if I assume my revenue in dollars is X, revenue X minus 60% of X, which is my cost of sales, that's my variable cost in this example. Cost of sales is my variable cost. And then I subtract 120,000 for the general and administrative and the marketing costs. And I set the formula equal to zero because we're thinking about break even. So x minus 0.6x gives us 0.4 or 40% x on the left hand side of the equal sign. If I add 120,000 to each side, some algebra, I get 0.4x or 40% of x equals 120,000. And if you look at the formula at the top, if I take 120,000 and I divide it by 0.4 or 40%, I get a break even in revenue of 300,000 for EBDAT. You'll notice that this revenue is 300000 and that if I included depreciation, I'd have a $20,000 loss. So if I had added that back, this number would have been zero instead of a $20,000 loss, just to sort of check your work. What about break even in, in revenue for a slightly different number, NOPAT, net operating profit after taxes? And we see that NOPAT is defined as measuring the operating profit and the profit made by shareholders and also considering debtors. And what I told the student was I had answered this question by using this formula here and posting different amounts in the net sale number until I got the net income to zero. I assumed the depreciation was a fixed cost. And since I was trying to get net income after taxes, so there's my tax line there, the number I was trying to get to zero was with this number. 
also is saving a 30% tax rate. So all had I changed this number, it would also change the net income because this entire spreadsheet is now linked. And I found out that if I put 375000 in sales, I'd get a net income of zero. So my break even for revenue is 375000 Now let me note something else. This is in dollars, break even in revenue. This is in dollars, break even in revenue. That was A and B. Now if I go down to C, what I find out is they like break even in units, which is different from break even in dollars. Break even in units sold. And they tell me in red here that the per unit sale price is $50. And the question is, let's solve for X, where X is number of units sold. So I'm going to take my sale price per unit of 50 and multiply that times X. That's my new revenue. So 50X and I know that 60% of 50x is my cost of sales, which is 30x. I'm still subtracting off my 120,000 general and admin and marketing costs. Those are my fixed costs up here. So if I do some algebra, 50x my revenue minus 30x my cost of sales, minus 120,000 my fixed cost, and I set the whole thing equal to zero. 50 minus 30 is 20x, I add 120,000 to each side of the equal sign and I get a formula 120,000 divided by 20 and I find out that X which is my number my break-even number in units is 6,000 units that's in units in blue as opposed to dollars in red the last formula is break even in units sold for the NOPAT. Now this is a little bit easier because what I solved up here was break even in revenue, which I put right here. All I have to do to get units is divide my break even in revenue, 375,000, divide that by 50, which is the unit sale price I'm given in the question, and I get my break even in units for NOPAT, which is A divided by B, and I get 7,500 units, and I put that in a different color. So to, again, to emphasize, what's in blue here is break even in units, which is different from what is in red up here, which is break even in revenue or total dollars. <coughs> That's as far as we're going to get on inter Intermediate Accounting 10B are not on the web series or additional videos and spreadsheets not on YouTube you'll find on the website. Our YouTube channel Ken Boyd STL you can email me for a complete listing of the videos on YouTube. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions stltest.net is the website. Here's my email and my phone number. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.